We're going to do a little bit of animation in Photoshop using the brush tool. And I downloaded this clip from the Dissolve stock footage website of this guy doing a kickflip. And as you can see, it was shot high speed. So the frame rate, I don't know, they didn't specify what it is on the website, but it's certainly a higher frame rate than 24. So the first thing that I want to do actually is I want to change my timeline frame rate. So I'm going to go in here to the set timeline frame rate option and instead of 23976 I'm going to change this to 12 so it's just a lot less frames to work with. And you can see that it's still playing back in slow motion but the frame rate is different. The frame rate has changed. It's actually thrown out some of the frames and it just does that mathematically. It doesn't do it in any sort of intuitive way. It just mathematically discards frames and it seems to work pretty well. So then the next thing that I want to do is I actually want to speed up this motion a little bit. So if you want to change the speed of a clip, you just right click and you go in to do a speed change in here. I'm going to change this to 200. Okay, so we've changed the timeline frame rate to 12 frames per second. We've also changed this clip to play back at 200% speed. So now this looks a lot closer to being real time. It's, a, it's still a little bit slow, but that's okay. So for the animation, we just have less frames to work with. So I'm gonna have some lines follow his wheels. So maybe I'll start from here and I'll bring in my end point to start around here. And then I wanna have this video end when he lands this so right around there, and so I'll bring the out point to here. So I don't, I'm not gonna animate everything. I'm just gonna animate this part right here. So right now this is a video group. This is layer one, and I'm gonna leave this as it is. So I'm gonna lock this up, because I, one thing that I don't wanna do is animate right on top of the video footage. And the reason why we don't want to animate or paint or erase on the video footage is that it affects the footage itself. You can't really undo that. So if you're going to do any animation on top of live action footage or on top of any footage that you import, don't do it right on that video layer. You want to do that on a separate layer. So we're going to go into layer, video layers, and we're going to make a new blank video layer. If you have that layer selected inside of the video group and you go to layer, new blank video layer, it'll actually put it inside of the video group because that's where you are, that's what you have selected. We don't want this to be inside of the video group because as you see it puts it next to it. That's how video groups work. So we want to make sure that this video clip is outside of the video group. So I just dragged it and put it outside. Now I have to you know, slide it over so it matches. If you make a new blank video layer, it will match the duration of the clip that you have on the timeline. So if you want to make a new blank video layer, make sure that you don't have a layer selected inside of a video group. So I'm going to close this and lock it. And then now I'm going to go up to layer video layers, new blank video layer. And as you see, it puts it right where your timeline slider is, but it will still be the same duration as the clips on the timeline. So now this is matched up and this is the layer that I want to do my painting on. So I'm going to go to the brush tool and I'm going to pick a color. I think something kind of vibrant is fun and change this brush size so it's a little bit bigger. There we go, that kind of matches, matches the wheel there. If I go to the next frame, it's gone because this is a video layer. So I need to turn on the onion skins I turn on the onion skins as you see the footage gets kind of dark and this is where you might want to 
try a different transfer mode inside of the onion skin settings. So if I go in here, uh, by default, it goes to multiply, but we're going to change this back to normal. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change this so the frames after is zero. So I'm only seeing the reference of the frame that came before. So I'll hit OK. Uh, actually, I'm going to lower this down to 30%, and then I will hit OK. And now I have a reference of where I had put that mark, the frame before. So on this one, you know, kind of match that a little bit. Maybe begin a little trail here. Next frame, same thing. Maybe create a little trail. And of course, this is easier if you have a Wacom tablet that is a stylus that's pressure sensitive. It's a little bit harder to do with a mouse. If you don't have a stylus and you're doing this with a mouse, one thing that you can do is you can use the eraser tool. Like, let me switch over and I'll, I'll do this with a mouse. So I have a mouse and I'm just clicking and dragging and it's all one size because it's not pressure sensitive. And then I can go back with the eraser tool and I can shape this with the eraser tool. So that's one one way. And I actually, I like using the eraser tool, even if I'm using a stylus to go back and clean up the lines. So I'm back. Back using the stylus here. But like I said, I'll go back here and kind of clean this up with with the eraser tool. And sometimes it's fun to have these irregularities. It feels a lot more uh, authentic and handmade. But whatever you think you know, fits your, your style. Okay, I can see here that the the board is starting to turn a little bit, so I'm going to change. I'm going to make sure that when I erase this, I'm erasing so it's behind the skateboard. And this is helpful because we now have a line. We can see the curve that we've been creating. and we can follow along that curve. Now sometimes you'll want to use a stylus or you'll want to use the rotate option inside of Photoshop uh, to move that canvas to fit you know how your how it's more comfortable for your hand so if you want to do this if you press on the R button and that's this option right here uh, you can go to the rotate view like H is a regular hand tool but then if you hit R that way you can click and actually rotate your image so it matches what is more comfortable for you so if you have you know your thumb on the space bar, you can move it around, and then uh, your pointer finger on the R button, you, know, you can you know, rotate. And then if you need to reset it at any point, and this happens often with the stylus, sometimes you'll get stuck with the compass on the screen, you just go in here on the rotate, and you hit reset view, and it'll flip it back. Uh, so it's at the original alignment. But I'm gonna rotate this a little bit, it's just so it's easier with the way that my hand is. So back to the brush tool. Now occasionally you won't be able to tell 
what you're looking at and you'll have to turn off the onion skins and then sometimes I'll make just like a mark so I know okay that's that's where I need to be and then I'll turn the onion skins back on just so I have a better reference because sometimes it can be confusing especially if you like working where you're seeing frames before and after it's helpful sometimes to go back and turn off onion skins Okay, so I am going to turn off onion skins and play this back. Make sure it's on loop playback. And we'll see what this looks like. It actually looks pretty good. So that's a good trail. And then, of course, I would do the same thing and I would go back and create another layer for each trail that I want to make. This is one that I had done beforehand where you can see that I have a darker pink or that magenta back there that's behind on the second wheel and then I put a third layer that is the impact you know I have this yellow layer that's the impact layer. you want to do all elements on separate layers because then you have the ability to move them back and forth and you're not locked in uh, if you need to erase or change something, then you have more control. So right here I have you know, this uh, brighter pink in the foreground, and then behind that I have this uh, darker, and then I have the yellow one that's on the very bottom that's behind them, and that's just like an impact. I highly recommend splitting up all of your elements to their own individual layer. It's just a lot easier to work that way and you have more control. All right, so that is doing some frame-by-frame -frame animation with the brush tool. Give it a shot and tell me what you think.